All right, I think we are ready to go. So welcome to yet another webinar in the series of Ombraco Technology Partners. This time I would like to introduce you to newcomers. In Ombraco, we believe in best of breed and with uh, way more than 750 sites running on Ombraco across the world, there are a lot of these that has other softwares built in or integrated with. With Umbraco's technology partner program, we want to inspire and build connection between our solution partners and our technology partners. On this series of webinars, you will get a chance to meet a new technology partner presenting their service and software each month. My name is Anders Sorensen. I am Chief Sales Officer at Umbraco. And with me today, I have uh, Søren Spelling, founder of Ucommerce. He will tell you all about Ucommerce and might even give you a small demo of their commerce platform for Umbraco. And I don't think I reveal too much by saying that it's not a coincidence they are called Ucommerce. If you have any questions, uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end and you can write your question in the chat. So stay tuned and stay with us for the next 30 minutes. Søren, please introduce yourself and take it away. Thank you, Anas. I'm very happy to be here. My name is uh, Søren Spillinglund and I am the founder of Ucommerce. I have been uh, doing this for 20 years and it's always a pleasure to work with uh, with Umbraco, there's no doubt about that. Um, before we get into it, you, I just want to tell you a little bit about what e-commerce is and, and where we hearken from because uh, it's been a, a fairly long journey at this point. So uh, back in 2008, uh, my co-founding partner and myself decided to build an e-commerce platform. Uh, and we wanted specifically to build an e-commerce platform that offered both content and commerce. Now, uh, back then, Umbraco was already pretty big, I think, to the tune of 50,000 websites, which was like mind blowing. Um, so we figured, well, we're not really experts in building content management systems. So why don't we just focus on the commerce bit of it and then integrate with Umbraco to create a seamless whole? And that is basically where e-commerce comes from and also where the U comes from. Actually, back then, all the packages were called UMB, whatever it did, right? So, uh, so, and we didn't really want it to be ump commerce. It didn't, it didn't quite sort of sound right. So we came up with a U at, and stuck that in front. And that is, uh, that is where we come from. So Braco is very much part of our DNA. It is, uh, it is the CMS that we are most deployed on. So, and it's a really good sort of partnership between uh, Braco and ourselves. So very happy to be here. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the slide that we're looking at and, and that you have been looking at for the past uh, few minutes. Uh, this is actually uh, from Code Garden. All the happy people in the in the in the background there. Um, uh, I think it was the very first Code Garden held in uh, Odense uh, when it moved from Copenhagen to uh, to Funen. And this was actually a very special moment for me because it was a, a chance to get up on stage and show our integration with Umbraco Cloud way, way back when it was called, uh, it was an unfortunate abbreviation, I think we can, uh, we can all agree, it was called uh, US, uh, short for Umbraco as a service, of course, so there you go. But it was really cool to stand there and show e-commerce work with Umbraco Cloud uh, back then, and we have been on this journey for a long, long time. So um, that's quite enough about uh, what e-commerce is and myself. Let's dig into uh, what uh, what we're going to talk about here today, and I, I would like to say there is a Q and A function here in uh, in Zoom that I would encourage you to use. Please hit that button and type in your question, and uh, we'll see if we can answer some of your questions as we uh, go through the slides here. And we'll also sort of pick up on uh, on on any missing questions toward the end. So feel free to jump in there and ask your questions. So let's go. So. Like any good fairy tale, there are three parts to the uh, to the presentation here. 
the first thing I want to do is I e-commerce is a huge product. Uh, it can do a lot of things. So, and I, I didn't want to sort of take you through all of it because you would be here for three hours and I don't think anybody would really appreciate that at the end of the day. So I, I picked one feature that I, I would like to show you, the, the one thing that I feel is the most important thing for a modern e-commerce solution. And then we'll move on to, to seeing some of the moving parts so you can get a feel for what it actually takes to create tailored e-commerce on Umbraco and e-commerce. And then finally, uh, we'll take a look at the future, some of the things that we're cooking up in the near future and in, over the next three years. Uh, there's a quite long roadmap that I'm really, really excited about and I'm hoping to share with you today. So the one feature right here. So the one feature and the, the one feature that you should be looking at in e-commerce platforms if you're evaluating and are starting to wonder if you should build or choose one for your agency is multi-channel. It's, it's, like, it's something that's, it has many names, but this is what it was called back in 2002 when I got started with, uh, with e-commerce and damn it, I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, but you'll also know it as uh, unified commerce or omni-channel commerce, you know, many, many names for the same thing, but it basically just means that e-commerce is permeating every sales channel of companies today, online, offline, multiple online channels, uh, in-store uh, kiosks, lots and lots of things. And, and I wanted to take some of the some of the examples here uh, of, of what we've seen in the past with e-commerce and share them with you and just talk a little bit about some of the characteristics of each of these. So there are quite a few, so let's, let's just do one at a time. So multi-channel e-commerce or omni-channel commerce is really just, if we boil it way, way down, it's really about e-commerce everywhere. Um, and I just wanted to, to, uh, to, to talk about a few here. So the first one, multi-trading partner, common in business to business where multiple companies are working together. You have one central uh, company like Umbraco, for example, that is doing business with many solution partners, which would be many of the attendees on the webinar today. Same thing for, for B2B commerce. You will have one company distributing, manufacturing, and they need to trade with lots of partners. And what's interesting here is that in many cases, each of these uh, trading partners will have a channel dedicated to themselves. Why? because each partner will have unique pricing. They may have their own products in their own cat uh, catalogs. They may have their own business rules. It's fairly common in a standard B2B solution to, to be operating like that. And so multi-channel is key for B2B to, to work at all, basically. Another interesting uh, movement that we've seen over the last, I would say five to eight years, it's really picking up over the last three, is going direct to consumer. So this is a mutation of B2B where you, know, you will be working in the way I just described with your trading partners, and that is your core business as a business to business company. However, lots of B2Bs are looking to actually approach direct to consumer, go direct to the customer and circumvent the distribution channel. You will see uh, big brands like Nike doing it, Adidas and so on and so forth. And usually the, the prime motivation behind it is to be able to control the experience customers get much more, and it's just another channel, right? So if you imagine uh, Nike working with a bunch of, uh, of trading partners that are distributing their products, and then combine into the mix a number of, of B2C channels that address individual markets, uh, that's really what direct-to-consumer is. And again, at the core of this way of doing e-commerce, which is becoming more prevalent, is the notion of having multiple channels within the same uh, infrastructure. And then, you know, classic uh, multinational e-commerce, you will have a situation where as a company, uh, you need to do business in Denmark, Germany, UK, US, in Australia, and maybe you have distributed teams that actually do e-commerce you know, in, a, in a decentralized fashion. And so each of these stores, again, to address the, the, vari the variation across markets will require a channel. Um, so you can dedicate again product, you can do uh, multi-currency, you can set up payment gateways that are relevant for the individual markets and so on and so forth. And other, another interesting variation in B2C is multi-brand e-commerce. And this was actually what e-commerce uh, was designed for way, way back. We, when we were dealing with uh, e-commerce, uh, other e-commerce platforms um, back in the agency days, we found that a lot of e-commerce platforms had a lot of challenges with actually doing multi-channel. So, so trying to shoehorn in multiple brands and things like that was very challenging for us. So we wanted at the core of e-commerce to have multi-brand e-commerce, which really uh, at the most abstract level is multi-channel e-commerce. 
Uh, but we wanted to support that where companies horizontally integrate over time multiple brand identities. You know, you may be starting in one uh, area uh, of selling knives, then you move to, to art, you move to plates and you tend whatever, stuff like that. And you want to keep your brand identities uh, separate. And that was what we originally built e-commerce to do. And clicking that into Umbraco is a really handy way of doing multi-channel e-commerce because when you think about it, Umbraco is an awesome uh, platform that's able to run multiple websites right there in one instance. So each root node uh, in there can be one website. And when you combine that with a platform like e-commerce where you can maintain multiple sales channels and, and snap those into the websites, you get a really strong multi-channel uh, content and commerce platform that is able to address a wide range of multi-channel scenarios, such as the ones we're looking at right here. And I would posit that today, you know, it's more common to see N plus one channels than just the one. You will see multi-channels almost all the time, maybe just for a landing page or, or, or a product uh, landing page, something like that, but even also for the bigger stuff. So e-commerce is starting to permeate the companies. At, at many different levels and multi-channel sit at the heart of it. And of course, e-commerce is super awesome at doing it because we've been doing it see, since V1 when we launched that Code Garden in 2009 uh, to standing uh, standing audience. Um, that was one of the premier features that we, that we highlighted and we have been improving it ever since. So that's multi-channel. Basically, we're starting to think about e-commerce as infrastructure. It's something that underpins many different uh, areas of the company, not just websites, also apps, also other sales channels on other platforms. It is, uh, it is the key that, uh, that drives your ability to tailor e-commerce uh, to, uh, to the customer's requirements. We call it uh, in combination with Framework First, sort of the, the core uh, value proposition of e-commerce and e-commerce from Braco. Okay. So it's all very abstract at this point, but that is a key capability on Braco's multi-website uh, ability and e-commerce's multi-channel ability that combines into one feature basically. But I wanted to make it a little more concrete because one of the cool things that we did uh, in, in late February is we launched e-commerce 9.4 and that actually improved our multi-channel capabilities significantly. And so I wanted to sort of dip into some of those capabilities and show you what it is that we did specifically to support this. So it all starts with, uh, with, with a name, Condo. And uh, we, when we started on one of the, our major projects, we lovingly uh, named it after Marie Condo because we wanted to put everything in, in its right place, right? So Condo is our code name for our UIs that drive all the management aspects of e-commerce. And Condo is built with one central aspect in mind, e-commerce centric experiences. So when we launched the first version of e-commerce, one of the things that were really cool where we didn't have to think so much about how we did UI because we were just following along Umbraco, right? Umbraco had a nice way to lay out tabs. It had a nice uh, app system and things like that. And we just clicked into it and e-commerce looked one-to-one -one like Umbraco. Pretty cool stuff. And we actually went to great lengths to do it. However, over the years, we found that, you know, managing a content management uh, system and a, a commerce system is uh, not surprisingly two very different things. So uh, on the content side, you tend to, to give more TLC to the individual pieces of content. So you work more with individual pages, whereas in e-commerce, it's more about getting around fast, dealing with many products many different aspects of the system in many in, in, at the same time. And so Condo was born as a way to address this, to try and create e-commerce centric experiences within Umbraco so we could give you the best of both worlds. And here's an example of it. So within, uh, within e-commerce and new stores app, the, the key concept is the channel. And so in e-commerce, it's not uncommon to have hundreds or even thousands of channels. Well, it's not super common, but it, it does also happen. So for B2B scenarios, for example, we're working with a company in the United States that has, you know, uh, distribute, uh, they're, they're distributing parts for, uh, for tractors, very specific, I know, um, but they have 1500 different uh, trading partners within the system. And so they need a store for each. And so we need to be able to scale to pretty high uh, number of stores. And you can see an example of this right here where we have just, just 138 um, 
but it becomes searchable and accessible in a completely different way uh, because the, the UI actually adapts to uh, to the number of stores. So it'll, they, the cards that we're looking at will start out real big if you just have one, two, three stores. So it looks awesome and it can provide more information right there. Um, but as the number scales, we introduce search, we introduce sort of a, a simpler way of displaying these things so we can scale to that amount of stores. So just a little example of where uh, the content side can differ a little bit from the uh, from the commerce side in that you know a couple of thousand stores does actually happen, whereas a couple of thousand websites in one Umbraco install, I would say, is a little more uncommon. Um, so that was that's the new uh, store app and the way that it, that, that it looks inside of Umbraco Eight. Actually, also works with Umbraco Seven. Just saying, the way we integrate it actually enables us to work with older versions of, of Umbraco 7. I did not think that we would see new projects on Umbraco 7 at this point, but just yesterday, somebody actually got in touch and asked, can we do e-commerce on Umbraco 7? Yeah, you can. We do recommend uh, version 8 because it's so awesome, but um, hey, it's possible. So that's the Stores app. It supports up to 2,048 channels. So you can set up 2,048 stores. We can increase this, but we figured that was a good place to be. One of the cool things is that it, it enables independent channel configuration. So if you're running B2B or and B2C in the same solution, you can attach different price lists and catalogs to the different stores. You can even configure different payment methods and things like that. So if you want to offer credit card payment on the B2C side, but not on the B2B side, you can do that. And of course, it's super fast. It's built using the latest uh, web-based technologies, UJS and things like that. Super, super fast to work with. Um, so. That's multi-channel, just at the very high level of how that works, but that's where everything uh, uh, starts. Let me show you another thing where uh, content and commerce differs a little bit. So we, our UX uh, department did a lot of research in how to navigate catalogs. And there was this whole discussion a year and a half ago on whether we should do catalog browsing, like you know, clicking through catalogs and categories and things like that, or if we should just do search. And we would ask different uh, partners and users of e-commerce, and they would they would all come back with with different answers. Basically, nobody could agree whether one or the other was was better. So what we did is we we decided to introduce uh, both ways of working. So and we also introduced a new way of working with with uh, navigation that uh, that is complete not completely different from what you see in Umbraco, but more tailored to 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 e-commerce. So the first way, first way is the catalog builder that we're seeing here, where you have a horizontal navigation rather than the tree structure that you're used to in, in, uh, in Umbraco. The reason we did it was because when you're dealing with lots of catalogs and lots of structure, it's easier to find out where you are when you're just looking at it. And it also enabled us to unify a bunch of workflows within that one UI paradigm. So you can create categories, you can sort, you can move, and I'm going to show you exactly how that works. But we also need to supply search because if you have, you know, a million items in here or two million or whatever, uh, yeah, you're navigating uh, catalog structures, <clears throat> that's gonna suck, right? So the other approach is basically to switch to search mode and then start to search for the SKUs and products you're looking for. And as you do, you can, you can tailor the lists that you're looking at here. So if you want to include images, other price points, you know, in uh, English pounds or kroner or dollars, you can have all that sitting side by side. And instead of me talking about it, let me show you what it looks like. So let's find uh, let's find a browser over here. There we go. So what we're looking at here is Avenue Clothing. This is a demo experience that we put together to show you how Brock and e-commerce can work together. The reason I have it uh, with me today is just so we have some catalog and product that we can look at. So we're not going to spend any time on the front end today. We'll just look at the back end because uh, time is limited. So let's log in. Everything happens through Umbraco, obviously. The way you, uh, you commerce and Umbraco work together is such that each platform plays to it their individual strengths. So it, within uh, Umbraco, all the content structure, all the pages, everything driving the overall experience exists uh, in, in Umbraco. So all the development uh, models and everything that you're used to work the same. However, we combine you commerce into that so we can start to bring in uh, new catalogs and things like that. And let me just show you the products app here. So this is the app we were looking at before, which enable you to search or navigate depending on what you want. So we can switch to navigation mode uh, into the catalog builder and you can see how we can start to click through uh, the system here. So one of the things, what I'm doing right now is I'm just using my, my mouse and navigating through. 
But we also wanted to enable uh, you to navigate these structures using only your index finger. So I'm gonna take my mouse and put it over here and I'm gonna use arrow keys instead to navigate. Because when you're navigating large structures, it's important that you can actually start to use your, your, your keyboard more because this is a tool you, you're expected to use day in, day out to get stuff done. When it comes to uh, integrating different UI paradigms into one, you know, creating a new, uh, a new category in here would, would normally be something in the older versions of Rocco, you would have to right click to create. The newer versions is a little different, but here we integrate that functionality right here with this little uh, plus sign here that we can start and we create a new category. Easy as that. Um, what we can also do is we can use, again, uh, the index finger approach. So we can stick the mouse over here and we can just hit the letter C and do exactly the same thing if this thing is in focus like that, right? And we can uh, bomb out as well. The other thing that was important here is that when it comes to sequencing catalog structures, uh, that was in the past in our UI, something completely different where you had to right click and do a, a few things to get there. Now it's drag and drop. So we can basically just take our category from before and drag it in place. We can also move it to a new place in the structure if we want, so we can reorganize our catalog structure right here from this one way of doing it. So that was what we wanted to do with the catalog builder, really quickly enable you to build catalog structure, re rearrange your catalog structure, uh, and get rid of things. Um, search, of course, is exactly what you expect. We search, we find, done, easy peasy. Uh, we hope to introduce a third navigational mode in the future, which is filter-based. So like you see on the front end where you can say, I wanna see all the Nike products, da, 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 da. But we now have the UX in place that enables us to expand more navigational modes as uh, they become available. So that's catalog browse, catalog search, and how to get around WooCommerce uh, in the big picture. Just a little, little example of that. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to use the QA function to, uh, to hit us up in the, in the chat there and uh, we will answer your questions if you have any. Now, I just wanted to show you one other thing in, uh, and this, is, this is a little, this is a Feinschmecker thing for, for companies working a lot with, uh, with e-commerce, but one scenario I came across many, many years ago that I'd never seen before and that I really, really uh, sort of caused some problems with us, I think this was back in 2005, was we came across a company in Belgium that was selling uh, garden chairs, garden lawn chairs, right? And you think, okay, how difficult can it be? And I certainly was thinking that. And then they, they came to us with, a, um, with a, uh, a question about how many variations we could hold for a single product. And I was like, uh, how many do you need? And uh, they came back, well, our, uh, our garden uh, lawn chairs uh, have up to 5,000 different variations which was very surprising to me. At this point, I'd been doing e-commerce for 15 years and I figured I'd seen it all. But you know what, for the moment you think that something comes across, right? That you've never seen before. So let me show you something. This is from a case in Sweden with a company selling uh, spare uh, air purifying equipment. They had the, sort of the same question and Condo is also about attention to detail because we've seen a bunch of these scenarios. So when time came to build out new UIs, of course, we thought about some of the more exotic things like this one, where uh, we have to the tune of uh, 3,269 variants on a single product. And of course, we want to make sure that that experience is as, um, as fast as possible. And you can see as we scroll through, the system loads new, new products up and makes everything available in a very fast way. So just a little example of you know <laughs> uh, something that is maybe not obvious if you haven't done e-commerce, for a long, long time that your product structures can become really strange and, and wacky. And we've tried to allow for that within e-commerce. So that's Condo, e-commerce first experiences, attention to details, and it's super fast. Uh, so I think you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy that a little bit. From a developer perspective, Commerce API, what does that look like? What can you expect when you need to build uh, tailored e-commerce for your clients? Well, from our perspective, there are three things that go into this performance, scalability, and usability. So the first thing is usability. What we wanted to do with the, with the Commerce API View Commerce was to come up with a way for you to work in a unified way across all the common scenarios when it comes to building out e-commerce pages. And it turns out there are exactly three ways of doing it. Uh, you have your standard queries, which are basically when you need to do a product page uh, or rather a category page with some products in it, product listings and things like that. We call that static querying. So that's basically just finding stuff within your catalog. 
Then the next thing uh, is, uh, is uh, faceted navigation. So once you navigate into a category, you want to start filtering. So we wanted to make sure the API can support that as well. And finally, we wanted to make sure that the, that same API could su support a full text search. So you can navigate ac across those three different ways. And what you're looking at here is what we came up with. It's a link-like API, super easy to use. It's safe by default. So we want to make sure that was, it was high performing right out of the box. And it does encompass all three uh, scenarios. So first, querying for products right here, finding all products within a category, doing uh, fuzzy searches. So this is full text search where we can sort of match, boost, and things like that. And finally, uh, faceted uh, navigation where we can pick out products that match a certain range and we can generate the facets as well. Safe by default is our design principle for enabling a commerce API that does not sort of, um, that tries and uh, tries and help you get into a mode of succeeding every time you're doing something. So we wanted to make sure it was super quick. And you can see an example of that down here uh, where the commerce API will not give you back more than say a hundred products. Uh, I think it's uh, around 64 or hundred out of the box. You can increase it, but the, the idea here is that if you wanted it to do more, you have to specifically ask it to do it rather than we just do it so, and, and surprise you when you do it, then load your, pro, uh, your, your solution up with 500,000 products. We want it to still be fast. So that's the, the reason there. And the way we achieve this. Um, okay, let's stop for a few questions here. Um, so uh, there's a question here from, a, from an anonymous um, attendee. So the question is, how do you manage uh, product landing pages? Is it via content or UCOMS? So it's actually both. You can have a, a pure content approach or a pure commerce approach, or you can mix and match. So uh, this, this, a really simple way of doing it is basically just creating a category page, sticking, uh, uh, sticking some products in. Uh, if you think about it, a category page is really a landing page for a few products. So that's one way. That's the pure commerce way of doing it. If you want to manage uh, content through Braco, we have some, uh, some data types, some property editors available that you can use to embed on your content to bring products right into your content. So you can pick right out of the e-commerce catalogs what you want to display within your product. I hope that answers the question. Uh, okay, another question. Uh, there is a, a question about dynamic web and PIM. Uh, could you talk about that? Uh, how does e-commerce differentiate from dynamic web PIM? Uh, I think we, we differentiate primarily by not trying to be a PIM uh, at all. What we do instead is like Anna said, uh, we, we have a best of breed approach. So rather than, uh, than trying to be a PIM, we try and be good enough to embody what a PIM can do. So we can take information out of a PIM, stick it into e-commerce and make it available in, in a blazingly fast way. That's the, the way we approach it via partnerships, basically. Um, good. Moving right along. The way we achieve performance within e-commerce is by taking a really flexible, speaking of PIM, really flexible data model uh, in the back end over here and flattening it basically for our API. So it's really fast to read. And the way we, and the, the results we get, I think, speak for themselves as we build this out. Uh, we have a data-driven approach to APIs, and we were sort of tracking different models for, for loading our product from the API. And we ultimately ended up going with the blue model here, uh, which is able to produce uh, results from the API really, really quickly. The rest of the graphs is like a historical approach. So we can see how does the API actually perform over time with multiple iterations, how uh, long is indexing time, how much data does it take up in a, in a, in a cloud environment, and so on and so forth. That's the e-commerce API, unified query search and facets. So you have to learn only one API to do your catalog listings. It's a link-like experience, so it's familiar, it's safe by default, and it is incredibly fast. And it, can, it will become even faster when we start to factor into equation enterprise scalability. So with version 9.4 of e-commerce, we had to come up with a way to scale e-commerce uh, in a new way, because simply because we're seeing e-commerce used for much, much bigger solutions than before. And so out of the box, we ship our APIs with a Lucene provider. This is the same search engine that Braco uses internally. We just use that same thing, stick our data in there, and we have our API running on top. We call it lovingly the Bolt API, and uh, that is basically the way that we, we get it. Uh, of course, this is after Usain Bolt, 
really quick, right? So of course, our API is the same. Now with 9.4, we introduced a provider-based approach because Lucene is great. You can roll it out. It's a file on a file system, very easy to manage. The challenge though, is that Lucene works on a single server only. So when time comes to scale out your environment, uh, you it, it becomes quite difficult. So with Elasticsearch, you can actually plug that into the bottom of uh, the Bolt API and start scaling out across multiple servers. So you now have a, a horizontal scale. The beauty of this is that it actually enables us to scale independently from Umbraco. So the, the, the reason that's important is that CMS and commerce platforms has very different performance characteristics. Um, so, so the requirement for, for content in a commerce scenario can be quite low, whereas the, the performance requirement for commerce will be, can be quite high. It can also be the reverse, and that's why we have opt-in complexity. So you only need to deploy a dedicated search tier in case you need it. Uh, why would you be interested in this? Well, fast stores equals more sales. Uh, yeah, if Amazon has done, Google has done some, a lot of uh, research on this. Even a few milliseconds uh, lower performance will actually mean lost sales. So it is incredibly important. So uh, we are running out of time here and oh, we no. have some questions also. Yes, Maybe you can, uh, you can uh, speak just uh, before people start to uh, jump off of uh, if anybody wants to, uh, to tr uh, test this out, get a demo or something, what, what is next step for? Excellent question. So the first thing is if you want to try it out, you can go to Umbraco demo uh, two or one uh, and try it out. We have a running, the latest version running there always. You can see the front end and the back end. Uh, so it's just like logging into Umbraco normally. It will have Avenue clothing and all that. We have a free developer edition that you can download and try out. You can install it right within uh, Umbraco uh, via the package manager, or you can use NuGet to roll it out uh, to get all this stuff. Um, another uh, approach is our custom success team. Uh, is, is, is ready to help you if you sort of look, need an e-commerce solution and you, you're sort of trying to figure out if e-commerce is a good fit, do reach out to us and, and, and set up a, a requirements walkthrough with us so we can sort of go through the Excel sheets you might have or the requirements you're looking to, uh, uh, to support so we can help you uh, ascertain whether e-commerce is a great fit because at the end of the day, we don't really want to push e-commerce on, uh, on scenarios where it doesn't really fit. So please take advantage of that. Yeah. But download it, try it out, have a play with it. And uh, so just uh, before we jump into the questions, uh, what is uh, the capability? I mean, is it uh, also for small web shops? And you talked a lot about enterprise as well. Where, what is the scale of Umbraco? Oh, yeah, yeah, so the, e -commerce. yeah, so that's an interesting question because Umbraco is such a, a diverse ecosystem that we've had to try and, and come up with, with ways of working with uh, with both small clients and large clients. So we have a free edition that you can use. We have that as a, uh, because we know the Umbraco community really enjoys having uh, access to awesome tools for, for nothing at all. So we, we make that available, but e-commerce is really for the mid-sized market. If you have multiple channels, if you have, uh, you know, uh, if you have a company where, where e-commerce is mission critical, that's what e-commerce can do, but we can scale all the way from one product up to, you know, uh, a million or two if, if, uh, if you like. So we, we can sort of address a lot of it, but it's the mid-market that's the most interesting to us. Okay. Thank you, Sean. So uh, let's jump into uh, some of the questions that uh, are still open here. Um, so there's one here. Does e-commerce support subscription model approach or membership model? Um, not sure I understand the, uh, the is it's, I guess it's from a sales perspective of selling subscription based I, I, products. I read it that way as well. I get, yeah. uh, can you okay. have a subscription model? Uh, can you sell subscriptions? Uh, yeah. and, uh, is there also memberships on, on this? Yeah. So this is actually, the, uh, if you start with a membership, uh, thing first, you know, what happens after you sell the subscription, it's actually a beautiful example of, of Umbraco and e-commerce working together because, uh, Umbraco has a membership system, as you know, which supplies login and da, 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 all that good stuff, accounts and things. So that's a great example of, of where Umbraco uh, gives us a feature for free. So if you need to enable login and subscriptions attached to a, an account, Umbraco has a lot of that built in already. When it comes to the sales perspective of this, selling a subscription is not super different from selling you know, a dress or a pair of shoes. 
it's it's really about enabling uh, selling the uh, initiation of the of the subscription that's like any other product so easy enough the challenge comes on renewals and the piece that usually needs to be clicked in there is a payment service gateway that needs to be clicked into the equation that supports subscription so they deal with renewing uh, charges and things like that the reason you would want it within the gateway and not within the e-commerce uh, platform is that the payment gateways have access to uh, loads more data on the internal side of, of their systems so when it comes to something like technical churn which is when a credit card is just about to expire sometimes they can save it and avoid, avoid some churn whereas that's not possible outside so you really want that sitting on the inside of, of a payment gateway so that renews and things like that signals going back and forth on renewals uh, so you can close out subscriptions hope that answers the question makes sense makes sense is it possible to integrate the the e-commerce catalog with an external uh, data provider such as uh, PIM? Uh, I think we already touched upon that, but maybe uh... yeah. But I can elaborate elaborate yep. a little bit um, because I do want to bring up uh, one important point about e-commerce, and that is we we don't try and do it all. We the reason we didn't build the CMS is because Umbrak was friggin' awesome at it, right? And also we didn't try and build a PIM because there are other companies out there that are awesome with it. So rather we, we want to enter into strategic uh, alliances with companies like Umbraco. And we've done the same for, uh, for PIM. So uh, I think the next door neighbor of Umbraco is, is called Strut, Struct PIM. They're an awesome PIM system based on Umbraco uh, technology which works really well with, with e-commerce and obviously Umbraco as well. And what we've done there is we've created an integration accelerator with uh, Struct to enable you know, uh, the functioning of the two systems independently, basically, so we exchange data. Uh, it's not an out-of-the-box integration. It is what we call an integration accelerator, which enable uh, partners to build out an integration, but we help you get there faster. And this is a model that we, we're going to do more going forward because e-commerce is about so much more than just the e-commerce platform. It's about PIM, it's about relevance, it's about CMS, it's about a whole host of things. And basically the way we see it is it's up to us to form really strong partnerships with the tools that make up the complete uh, e-commerce solution. So product prediction, for example, is some, not something e-commerce is ever gonna do. Instead, we're, we're partnering with a company called Relevice, uh, which is our next door neighbor. Uh, so, so to create that piece of the puzzle, because we very much buy into the headless approach, into the best of breed approach when it comes to doing e-commerce. Yep. And there's one here from Pedro. Uh, does e-commerce offer pre-packed uh, baked uh, front-end co uh, components a developer could simply use uh, to set up instead of using the API to surface data? Hmm. Uh, how easy is it to customize, uh, to match desired UI, UX? Yeah, so um, e-commerce is by no stretch of the imagination a turnkey solution. I just want to make that absolutely clear. E-commerce as Umbraco is intended to be a development platform where you have a very clear idea of what you want it to be. And we follow suit, basically. Having said that, Avenue Clothing that you're looking at here is an open source repository that you can take that takes you through the entire uh, process of, of, of checking out. We have also created a partnership um, with a Swedish company called WebMind, who is building uh, something called Ucelerate, which is basically a, that is a set of prepackaged tools that you can set up. It's not out of the box, it's not turnkey, but it is something that will help you out. Um, so, so there are multiple ways of, of getting there, uh, basically. Okay. Uh, then there's one here. I think it's two questions in one. Uh, is the latest e-commerce compatible with uh, Umbraco Cloud? Is it still uh, reliant on an external Raven DB application for indexing? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so uh, our when we QA a new release, we QA it with multiple versions of Umbraco. We actually have a really cool capability of taking the latest version of Umbraco or any version of Umbraco, basically installing it automatically in, in a Docker image, deploying e-commerce into that and running automated tests against that. Uh, we can't quite do the same thing with Umbraco Cloud, unfortunately, because we don't control the deployment environment. But so we're doing manual, we have like a manual uh, QA process that basically uh, takes us through steps of installing, upgrading and working with Umbraco Cloud. And yes, of course, we work with the latest version. Uh, and then there's one- oh, Raven. Yeah. 
Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so Raven is a cool technology, and uh, but and we're really happy with it actually, and lots of our partners were. But it turned out that a lot of partners were not really that comfortable operating and maintaining a, a Raven cluster. So that's why we created Bolt with Lucene and Elasticsearch at the bottom. So the concept is the same, but we're using more familiar technologies that are already present in, in Umbraco and that we know also be widely deployed within our partner network. So Raven is out, Elasticsearch is in, or Lucene. Okay. How uh, this is uh, related to uh, to PIM again? How do you import uh, PIM data into e-commerce? Can this be uh, dynamic and synced? Um, it can be synced, definitely. That's what we recommend because our delivery mechanism through uh, Lucene and Elastic is so fast that you would typically have to build that anyway. We just give it give it to you out of the box. Uh, dynamic, um, I don't know. Dynamic is such a dynamic word, it can mean almost anything. It's dynamic in the sense that if you update it in the PIM, it will be updated in e-commerce. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure I completely understand the question, but that, that's that's the idea. And that's what that integration accelerator I mentioned before between e-commerce and Struct is all about. And, and you recommend uh, Sync, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So uh, there's one here is uh, on Braco Cloud, uh, is e-commerce only on Braco Cloud or is this also available for non-cloud? It is both. Um, in the past, uh, with, with the new enterprise scaling capability, uh, installing and operating a large e-commerce solution in Braco Cloud has become much, much viable because it's, uh, you know, because this, the e-com scalability requires so much, uh, you know, putting that onto its own thing can make a lot of sense. So I would say Braco Cloud is a really nice option for, for, for a sort of a lighter content uh, and heavier commerce solution than, uh, than in the past, but it also very much works in a, in a non uh, Braco Cloud environment. If you want to set up your own Braco, scale it out manually and not have all the benefits of upgrades and all that good stuff that cloud gives you. Um, then uh, for the Umbraco partner uh, who wants to develop their internal uh, e-commerce readiness and competence, uh, what resources uh, are available? How do they get started, Sean? Well, the first thing is to just download it and try it out. Um, but we do have a um, training material as well, certification programs, uh, certification for, for partners and developers. So I would, I would say download it, play with it. That's the way you, you learn the most, right? Just get your hands dirty. I said, grab the developer edition and, and knock yourself out. Um, if you wanna be a little more structured about it, use our masterclasses. We are in fact uploading a brand new masterclass right now, uh, not this minute, but you know it's happening ongoingly. And our goal is to complete that work by the end of March. So we will deploy a fully new training program uh, for V9, as well as a new certification program for developers, so you can enjoy that. Um, uh, the URL you want is, uh, uh, you can find it, the new stuff on our YouTube page for now, and our, we are updating our academy sites um, shortly when we have all the videos available. Okay. And so, so then, then you need to talk a bit about the pricing model here. Uh, yeah. How, 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 what is the cost of your commerce? Yep, there are two price points. First price point is completely free. Install your commerce, you can use it, and that works really well if you have just one channel, you know, one store, one language, one currency. So if you're running a small store that does not have a ton of requirements, really good to go. You tap into a lot of the capabilities we just talked about, um, and yeah, just get super fast solution out of that. Uh, for the for the larger stuff, uh, we have the, uh, the the sort of the paid version of your commerce which includes all the bells and whistles, enterprise scalability, multi-store, multi-currency, multi-everything. Uh, and that runs you at 6,500 euros per year per server. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, and then I think Casper uh, is just uh, commenting in that dynamic uh, Web is a very standard, all uh, in, out of the box. E-commerce is very not standard and uh, very more like very flexible e-commerce framework. We work Thank with you for that one, Casper. and Highly love e-commerce, yes. <laughs> and I will uh, also, for the rest of you, we will send out a recording uh, of all of this uh, to everybody uh, so you can uh, see it again. Uh, and I think, is there any more? questions left. I think we are through here. 
Uh, yeah. So, Søren, just to uh, recap, uh, we saw a lot of uh, great things here uh, and uh, had some uh, demo of uh, some of the things. Uh, thank you for that. And again, how do they get in touch if they have further questions? Uh, you can reach out to uh, sales at ucommerce.net. Uh, that will give you a straight line in. Uh, visit our webpage. There's also many ways of contacting us there. You find our phone number, give us a call. We love uh, speaking to our partners and customers, so uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we will certainly be there to help you out to the best of our ability. All right. Uh, then I think we will uh, finalize uh, this uh, webinar on our technology partner series. Uh, we will announce uh, yet another one here in about a, a month uh, shortly. So uh, stay tuned for, for that as well. Thank you, Sean, for a well done webinar. And Thank you thanks much. for all you attendees as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Bye.